On a distant planet, host to a peculiar landscape filled with the most unusual ecosystem, a race of giant blue humanoid aliens called Drags hold power. The Drags are the masters of the home, a race of small humans treated like pets and wild animals. Often mistreated, forced into fights with other homes by their owners, made to wear ridiculous costumes and oppressive collars for the amusement of their masters, homes are an oppressed race of beings. Tear, a tame home owned by a young Drag girl, decides to run away from his master and becomes assimilated into a tribe of wild ohm, a faction which gradually aims to live peacefully, until antagonised during a masty oming, a genocide of their people. From peacefulness, they are pushed to retaliate and fight back. This is René Lelou's Fantastic Planet, also known as La Planète Sauvage, a psychedelic animated film with a wonderfully jazzy sensual score. Fantastic Planet has gained a cult following for its fascinating visual world building and its politically motivated message of activism. As a science fiction fantasy, Fantastic Planet provides unusual distinctive visual sequences which offer little explanation as to their meaning. Characters blend into meditative states, crystals grow like vegetation, a beast cruelly shakes and throws avian-like animals to the ground, laughing at their dead bodies. Such images encourage the viewer's imagination to appreciate and interpret their significance to the film's world building. Fantastic Planet's sense of world building is ambiguous ambitious and admirable. Its creation of otherworldly flora and fauna is exciting. The film even dedicates sequences solely to demonstrating how the plant and animal life behaves on this unusual planet. The objects, the plants, the animals' purposes are not explained, but as viewers it becomes clear that Fantastic Planet is establishing hunting routines, mating rituals, and peaceful meditation. It's a lot of visual information concisely but brilliantly explored to emphasise the depth of this fantastical world. However, Fantastic Planet is not just simply an exploration into the depths of fantasy, it's also a political film depicting social class-based struggle and discrimination based on race. The drag's ignorance makes them believe that the Ohm are a race of stupid, dirty pests, and yet time and time again the Ohm challenge the perception by outsmarting, outwitting, and defeating the drags. One sequence depicts a deoming, a form of pest control to rid an area of the small humans. This is a genocide motivated by power. The drag wish to control the own, and when they lose such control, they plan to kill them. The aim is to send a message of fear to those who survive, and to rid the area of those who are more confrontational and anti-establishment, against the current drag own power imbalance where one race owns another. The own are downtrodden to the extent that they aim to fight back. When the surviving own rendezvous away from the genocide, two drags come along, crushing some of the small humans. Furious, the Ohm fight back, managing to incapacitate and kill one of the giant blue aliens. While their acts of defiance have been long running before this point, stealing resources from the drags and embracing stray Ohms as their own, this act of murder serves as a turning point. The Ohm will no longer be passive sufferers to the oppression of the drag. In this manner, the surrealist planet is a reflection of our own. Oppressive forces that push and shove the wider public for too long will face a backlash. This is something we see throughout history, from the French Revolution in 1789, caused by the fury at the French monarchy, to the Arab Springs in the early 2010s, caused by the frustration and anger towards oppressive regimes that led to a poor standard of living. History illustrates that the oppressed will fight back against their oppressors. The Civil Rights Movement, the Stonewall Riots, the American Revolution, Fantastic Planet is reflecting our history when it depicts the Ohm and their fight back against the drag forces that continue to oppress them. Writing for the New York Times, specifically the Room for Debate Opinion section, J.P. Tellot stated that this is what our genre films tend to do best, not detail the realities of specific problems so that we might avoid them, but rather represent our most pressing cultural anxieties. While Fantastic Planet was created back in 1973, it is still reflected of our cultural anxieties. When there is an injustice of power, people will retaliate by standing against such injustice. Oppressive injustice is not just an experience of the past, but is still apparent in the present day world. Whether it is the killing of the unarmed black child Tamir Rice by a police officer, which served as a motivator for the Black Lives Matter movement, and their aim for the arrest of police officers guilty of killing unarmed black people, or it is the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong fighting against 
against the allowing of extradition to mainland China, where citizens are finding their human rights challenged. Fantastic Planet's portrayal of activism is reflective of this. The fact that Fantastic Planet is such a reflection of political climates through the centuries illustrates its timeless brilliance. In conclusion, René Laloux's Fantastic Planet is a fascinating example of science fiction cinema with its ambitious talent for world building, a landscape filled with terrifying and gorgeous sights to behold. However, like the best examples of science fiction, it is more than simple spectacle, but also an insightful reflection of oppression and the fight against injustice. The central conflict between the race of giant blue aliens and small human beings is similar to the conflict between a dictatorship and the people it rules over. In this manner, Fantastic Planet proves to be essentially an incredible human timeless tale.